Hi everyone, it's April, and today I'm going to discuss what to charge for my work. Everyone asks continually, all over the place, what they should charge for their work. I have seen where people say to charge 25 cents a square inch to 75 cents a square inch. And today we're going to actually just go over the math required to find an accurate cost per square inch for your pouring artwork. You could apply this to pretty much any artwork, but determining the amount of materials that you use in, say, a traditional painting is considerably more complex than figuring it for a pouring painting, because with pouring you are measuring out your materials and mixing them. Part of what we discuss here will be easy for everyone to use. Another part is using my own work as an example. It's important to realize that there are 10 different factors to put into what your materials cost and what goes into the cost of each painting. It's more than just the cost of the material and your time. But we are going to start out with the cost of material by usable measurement. Now the cost of your materials are going to vary depending upon the unit that you purchase it in. For example, Liquitex pouring medium for 128 ounces, the MSRP is $100. This comes out to 79 cents per ounce. But if you're buying it in 8 ounce bottles, it is $16 per bottle, which comes out to $2 per ounce. So the cost can vary greatly depending on what quantity you are buying your material in. Another popular material that people use is Floetrol. Here in the United States, I get it for $14 per gallon, which comes out to 11 cents per ounce. Distilled water is $2 a gallon, and that comes out to roughly 2 cents per ounce. If you're using glue all or PVA glue, this is $35 per gallon, or 27 cents per ounce. We're going to base all of our costs off of the MSRP, because it is not always on sale. You cannot base your pricing off of the price you paid necessarily. Basing it off of the MSRP is a much smarter business practice. You may get a commission order where you need to purchase materials very quickly and not have the luxury of waiting for them to arrive in order to get a $60 price versus a $100 price. Um, a couple of the additives that people use frequently are dimethylcone. With dimethylcone, I have found the purest form is KY Truefeel, and that comes out to $6.67 per ounce. Another factor that is going to vary greatly between each painting and each artist is the paint that is used. If you're using a very low price craft paint like Apple Barrel, your price is going to come out to approximately 25 cents per ounce. Now if you're using a golden heavy body paint, these range from $9 to $22 for two ounces. So your pricing is going to be more along the lines of $4.50 per ounce to $11 per ounce. Once you have determined the cost of your individual materials by ounce or milliliter, you need to determine the formula that you're using. For simplification purposes, in this example I'm going to use a formula that is one part pouring medium one part Floetrol, one part paint, and one part water, and one part PVA. This makes a five ounce mixture if we are using one ounce as our parts. Since we've divided our materials down to the cost per ounce, this is the best way for us to determine 
our materials. One part of pouring medium is 79 cents. One part Floetrol is 11 cents. One part paint is 25 cents. One part water is 2 cents. One part glue is 27 cents. Each of our materials makes up 20% of our formula. We're going to divide this out. For the apple barrel, we come to $1.44 for 5 ounces with apple barrel. If we change our paint to the golden paints, our price per 5 ounces is $12.19. Now, again, we want to divide this down to our cost per ounce. Using apple barrel paints and our $1.44 price, we're going to divide that by 5, and we come up with a total of $0.29 cents per ounce using apple barrel paint. Using golden paints, we're going to divide our $12.19 by 5, which is the number of ounces, and we will come up with our total of $2.44 per ounce. This is just the cost of the material, the paint itself. This is not the cost of the surface or anything else. We will figure those later in this tutorial. Now it is important for us to figure out how many square inches are in our surface. I know that 3 quarters of an ounce will cover a 4 inch by 4 inch tile. A 4 inch by 4 inch tile is 16 total square inches. Now if we take that 0.75 ounces and divide it by 16, we come up with 0.5 ounce, 0.05 ounces per square inch is what is required to cover our surface. Now we need to determine the size of the surface that we are using to sell. I'm going with a 16 by 20 canvas. This is a total of 320 square inches. That is 16 inches in length multiplied by 20 inch width and that equals the 320 square inches. So now we need to determine the cost per square inch for the paint that goes on our surface. We know that 0 0.05 ounces will cover one square inch, and we're going to multiply that times 0.29 cents, which is our cost per ounce for apple barrel mixture, and we're going to come out to a cost of 2 cents per square inch. Using the golden paints, we're going to divide out our $2.44 per ounce for the golden mixture and multiply that by the 0 0.05 ounces, and we're going to come up with a total of $0.12 cents per square inch. Now our sample project is a 16 inch by 20 inch canvas. We already know that is 320 square inches, so we're going to multiply the 320 square inches times our cost per square inch, and this is going to equal our total project paint cost. With Apple Barrel, this total will be $16.40. With Golden, this total comes to $38.40. Next, we have to factor in the cost of the painting surface. I prefer to use plywood. It costs me $35 for a 4 foot by 8 foot piece. From that piece, I have it cut into 16 equal pieces. When I divide the $35, which is the cost of the plywood, by 16 pieces, I come up to $2.19 per surface. If I choose to gesso these, my cost for gesso is $93.99 for a gallon.
I can cover 16 pieces with one gallon. This brings my cost per surface to $5.88. I'm going to add that to the cost of the wood and that brings my total to $8.07 per surface. It is also important to factor in the finishing costs. My finishing costs come out to $2 per painting for wire, paper, hook eyes, all the things that I need to make it where it can actually hang on the wall. For the glossy finish, I spend about $1.94 per painting. For my sandpaper, which I do between coats of the gloss, it comes out to $1.50 per painting. And I tend to go through a $15 paintbrush every 100 paintings that I clear coat. And that cost comes out to $0.15 cents per painting. This brings my total finishing costs to $5.59 per painting. The next thing that you have to factor in is what does your time cost? At my job currently, I make $18 per hour. If I was looking at my art as a way to replace my current job and my current income, I would need to factor in my time cost at $25 per hour. This allows me seven extra dollars per hour to go to the government just because I am self-employed. This number might vary depending on who you are and what you make and the experience that you bring into your art, but it is important to factor in the cost of your time. You also need to figure out how much time does it take for you to complete one painting. Since we're using a 16 inch by 20 inch painting as our example, this generally takes me five hours to complete one painting. At the $25 per hour it would take to replace my current income, this brings a labor cost of $125 to my pieces. You also need to determine in your studio cost. You may think, okay, I work from home and I play with this just in my garage or in a spare bedroom. I don't have a studio charge. But the truth of the matter is you do. For my example, I have a three bedroom house which costs me $1,500 a month. I'm going to divide that $1,500 a month by the three bedrooms which comes out to $500 per month for the room I use as a studio. Multiply that by 12 months, it comes out to $6,000 per year. Divide that out by 365 days, and we come up with $16.44 per day studio charge. Our materials do not end there, neither do our costs. There are other supplies and materials that you need to factor in as well, such as your drop cloths, your paint trays, your cups, your drying racks, your sticks, your camera, your rubber gloves, your stirring sticks, your level. Everything you use has a cost and needs to be factored in. Many of these items are things you can use more than once. I have come up with just a general $4.78 charge for my other supplies and materials that go into my paintings. So it is important now for us to add up all of our costs to determine what our cost for a 16 by 20 painting would be. We determined that the paints using golden paints were $38.40 for a 16 by 20 painting. My studio charge is $16.44. The cost of my surface is $8.07. The cost of finishing each painting is $5.59. The cost of my other supplies is $4.78. The cost of my labor 
is $125. This brings my total for a painting that is 16 inches by 20 inches in size to $198.28. This is using golden, golden paints. The cost per square inch total is 62 cents a square inch. Now if we're going to look at the same using apple barrel paint, the studio charge is $16.44, the other supply is $4.78, the paint mix $6.40, the surface $8.07, the finishing $5.59, and the labor $125. This makes the total using Apple Barrel Paints $166.28 for a 16 by 20 painting. That comes out to 52 cents a square inch. Even looking at this using the cheapest paint I can find personally, 25 cents a square inch would not cover my total costs. There are ways that I could change my total costs. One of these is to decrease my labor. I could change my paint surface to just a plain 16 by 20 gallery wrapped canvas, which I can pick up for $16, and that would decrease my labor by two hours. This would make my labor charge $75, but it increases my surface cost to $16. Overall, though, this brings the cost for each painting to $42 less than it is otherwise. So the $166.28 using a wood surface actually comes down to $124.28 using the Apple Barrel paint mixture. That means I would have to sell a 16 by 20 gallery wrapped canvas for $124.28 in order to replace my current income. Even doing this, this only brings my cost down to 39 cents per square inch. Nowhere near the 25 cents per square inch that people state you should be charging between. Again, there are costs here that I have described that will be less for you or possibly more for you, such as the studio charge and the other supplies, your labor cost, your finishing cost, depending on the materials you use, will also play a factor in determining the overall cost. I will say that the best method you can do to determine your finishing costs or your materials cost is to round it down to a small portion, like going from the gallon size to the one ounce for factoring my costs. By knowing my cost per ounce, I can determine the cost for a painting four inch by four inch just as easily as I can determine the cost for a painting that is 36 inches by 48 inches. For the end of this video, I will just put up some formulas that will show you the way that I determine the costs for different materials.